Galarian Zapdos is a big-footed fella that's rarely used, but it's actually really nice with its solid base 125 attack and 100 speed stat. It has good offensive typing with Fighting Flying, and its ability Defiant is amazing in being able to double its attack stat whenever a stat is lowered by a flame. Its dual stab options in close combat along with Brave Bird do great damage, or even its exclusive move Thunderous Kick which always drops the target's defense. Paired with coverage in things like Knock Off or even U-Turn for some fast pivots. Galarian Zapdos doesn't get the respect it deserves, and today we're going to try to run over some people. Look, moral of the story is sometimes you gotta pull out the Roadrunner fighting Zapdos and punch some people with your chicken feet. If you're into that kind of thing, you should probably consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, I'd love to have you as part of the journey, and with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Porygon 2. Rubber Ducky is always a problem for me as I lead off with Empoleon. I'm here to set up my Stealth Rock, but as I'm looking at it, the Porygon is going to be a problem. This thing, it, it just never dies. And one way you can ensure that it at least is a little bit easier to kill is to get rid of its Eviolite held item. That's going to make it a whole lot less bulky. So I decided even knowing that this thing has the Bolt Beam coverage, or at least the Discharge, I'm going to go for the knockoff turn 1. Get rid of that rock, which is going to, yeah, make it much more manageable. So, I am fully specially defensive in Polyon. I know I can take discharges all day long out here, so I can basically now just go ahead and set up my stealth rock and have myself a nice little penguin time. As they are going to continue to discharge, it does bring me to about half, but getting rid of Eviolite and also setting up stealth rock is some decent value, at least for Empoleon here. So... At this point, I could try to surf and just get some chip on the guy, but I imagine they're probably just going to stay in, go for another discharge, which makes me realize I should try to get something going. And I'm going to switch into the old three-segment Dunsparce. Freaking, the Dunsparce is a weird dude, and I don't know what the hell they were thinking with this guy, but I know that I can take attacks from, you know, Porygon pretty much all day. If it wants to Thunder Wave me, it's kind of fine. So they do actually just go for another discharge. I eat that up, no problem, and at this point... I'm going to try to go for a little Calm Mind action. So this is a Throat Spray set with Boom Burst and Calm Mind setup. And as they actually end up switching out, they're going to go right into the one guy I was kind of hoping they wouldn't, which is freaking Iron Tread. So Iron Treads comes in here. I imagine they probably want to go for a Rapid Spin. And so I do have the Spin Blocker in the form of the Ghost Type with the Decidueye in the back. Problem is, I can come in on a Rapid Spin, but then they probably just have some type of coverage, and I can't really hit it in return. So as I go for the Calm Mind here, I uh, do notice they are going to be booster energy, that is fine, I figure I can take attacks here, plus they're more than likely just going to rapid spin anyway. So, after some deliberation, I decide I'm going to go for the Shadow Bomb. Now the reason for that is I'm Serene Grace, I have a decent chance at least to try to get a special defense drop. I know that a Boom Burst does do like 10% more damage, but with a special defense drop, um, it's relatively likely, and I figure two should be able to kill maybe if I get a Spadef drop. I do not, however, and as they rapid spin away my rocks, they can now just go for an Earthquake. I kind of think that's going to end up killing me, but actually, I live. So I click Shadow Ball again. I, I probably should have gone for freaking Boom Burst as I don't even get this Bedef drop once again. So Dunsparce out here just being, just hanging around like a damn log, just getting beat up on. So one more Earthquake does take care of me. Now that's fine. The Dunsparce did at least get enough chip on the treads to where I know I can take it out with eh, some decent options, and uh, it's, it's fine. I do get the Revenge Switch now. I decide this seems like a pretty good time to bring in the Galarian Zapdos. So, this thing is working with weakness policy. One good thing about that, it does potentially bluff that I am like Choice Scarf. A lot of the time these are going to be a Scarf set, thinking maybe they switch here, but I'm actually just going to go for the knockoff. It's a good middle ground play as it covers for if they want to stay in or switch. And as they go for the Wild Charge, that doesn't have enough damage to knock me out, which is great, because the super effective hit then activates the weakness policy, which is amazing. I now have doubled attack. And while they don't even have a booster energy, I know a knockoff is easily going to be enough to knock the thing out. So that is going to take care of the treads. And now Zapdos has found himself in a pretty solid position here. So they now decide to switch into Indeed. This thing is going to spill some grape juice on the battlefield. Puts up that Psychic Surge. Going to be blocking priority. Um, but as I'm looking at this fella, you know, I do have the knockoff. But also a close combat after that policy boost should be enough. Now shout out to Big Hips over here for being part normal type because that is going to be a neutral hit. And uh, Galarian Zapdos is not playing games. Look at the size of them feet. Imagine getting punched by them. That's definitely going to knock out Indeedy. And we are making a nice little hole in the squad here. So, here's the situation. They now decide to go into the one defensive thing that can take a hit from the Zapdos. Which is going to be, of course, freaking Glyscore. Big meaty claws over here is always just the type of asshole who doesn't die. So, I decide one way that I actually can grab a kill here. At least assuming that this thing is just going to be the standard kind of 
protect defensive poison heal Gliscor is going for the Terra Flying, which is going to then boost up my Brave Bird. So that's the plan. I put some balloons on my head, and now with a weakness policy and a nice little extra stab on a Brave Bird, I can grab myself a nice little easy KO here, and they actually just end up going for the Protect. So Buddy is using Protection. They probably do that just in case I went for a knockoff to try to just get rid of its Toxic Orb before it can use it. But uh, the Protect, anticlimactic as hell, but they do know now that uh, a big old Brave Bird is going to be coming their way. So the downfall to going for a Brave Bird here is that I will kill myself with the recoil. Good news is that at that point we've taken care of half of the squad if I can grab the kill. So I do of course outspeed, I can go for that Brave Bird with the balloons, and that is just a nice little easy Oko on the guy. It's worthwhile for me to go for that just because of the fact that Gliscor is just always a problem, especially for my team in the back. So. While I do knock myself out to the recoil, Zapdos came in, killed half the squad, and it makes the end game at least a whole lot better for us. So, at this point we've got ourselves a good old fashioned empty battlefield. Now one thing important is that I cannot go for any priority because of that psychic terrain, gotta keep that in mind. Uh, I decide to go into the cleaver here. Now this is a little bit of a, he's a this is a weird cleaver, and you'll kinda see why. So. They decide to bring back in the Porygon too. Now ordinarily this would be decent for me, having the potential to kind of threaten it with close combat. I however do not have the close combat, so instead I decide to go for a Stone Axe. I know that it doesn't have its Eviolite, it does a round half, uh, which shows that it's going to be more of a physically defensive Porygon too. but uh, it then can just fire off a Discharge, which is fine, I know that I can take those all day long. However we do get paralyzed, which because of course we do, and so this Cleaver is meant to go for Theory Cutters and Agilities, and that's going to be for a future video, but it, I'm telling you, it's uh, it's actually pretty damn wild if you can get it to work out. So this thing's over here continuing to go for Recovers, which, you know, is annoying. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm just going to go for more Stone Axes. It does a round half once again, and I'm feeling like I could potentially switch here. The main things I'm worried about is conserving what I have for their threats in the back, mainly being the Latia. So, they actually end up going for the Hyper Beam, and <laughs> thanks because we're Rock type, we're able to actually barely live, which then we actually get fully paralyzed, which does suck. So, at this point, I'm just gonna continue to fire off some uh, some Stone Axes here, and uh, it obviously has to recharge. This next Stone Axe is gonna be able to take care of it. It's a Porygon down, and that is one less annoying duck in the world, which means we've, we've had a win today. Now. At this point, they are down to two Pokemon left. First of all, we've got a Latias, and next is going to be a Poltegeist. So, as they bring in Latias here, this thing, a, I would ordinarily have a nice little X Scissor here. I am paralyzed, it is going to be faster, and can easily just pick me off with an Aura Sphere. So, down goes the Cleaver, which is fine, because what I've been kind of conserving in the back is at least a little bit of a win con is going to be the Decidueye here. So, uh, first of all, the Psychic Terrain does go away. That's going to open the door for Robin Hood to potentially get off some uh, some Shadow Sneaks if need be. So, uh, as I bring in Robin Hood, I can I know that I can basically I can take one attack from this thing as long as it didn't set up a Calm Mind, which we should be good. So I can now just go for the Spirit Shackle, go ahead and chain the fool up because we're just kinky like that. And they do actually end up going for the Calm Mind this turn in hope that potentially maybe they take an attack here and then outspeed and then are able to knock me out. But luckily for us, Decidueye stays ready out here, and a Spirit Shackle with that nice little stab, also looking kind of like a cool animation, is able to just knock out Latias, which does in fact feel good, man, because Decidueye was kind of the only thing that could handle it there. And now with our final Mon being the Poltegeist, we have a, li a little, a little ghost on ghost shenanigans going on here. So. What's normally scary with these T fellas is that they could be Focus Sash, but luckily with that Stealth Rock we're able to break a potential Sash. I can then decide to go for a Shadow Sneak here with that priority. I also have Spell Tag, it is Stab, and I'm thinking this is a freaking easy pot. This thing should not be able to take an attack. They do actually go for the Terra. Luckily for us, it's going to be the Ghost Terra. They want to just boost their own Stab, but uh, it doesn't work for them defensively because then I can just go for that Shadow Sneak, sneak up on his ass, and that does take care of the Poltegeist. So that is going to finish off the T and also the game. Thought that was just a fun match and uh, Decidueye coming in clutch at the late game there. So fun times as always, but you already know I do have another match for you. And if you've stuck around at this point, go ahead and hit that like button for me. It really is true that likes just help out the video and I don't know, YouTube likes it. So just click the button. Regardless, this is a really good game and we're going to try to see if we can get some Zapdos to do some more Zapdos stuff. I guess without zapping, because he's actually not even electric, but you can do some kicking as a chicken. Let's get into it. All right, so this time my opponent is actually going to go ahead and lead off with a regular old Zapdos. So they got the, the standard classic boy as I have a spider, and Ariados is here to, you know, set up some sticky web and just do Ariados nonsense while being a cool spider. So 
I don't really know exactly what this Zapdos wants to do. Turns out what it wants to do is miss a hurricane, which is totally fine by me. Nothing like starting the game off with a cheeky little dodge. That then allows us to get up our sticky web for free, which is great. Now, I can't really hurt this Zapdos in return, so I realized I should probably just switch in anything that wants to deal with the hurricane, and then I can kind of just be in a spot later, conserving that Focus Sash on Aerido since they don't have up any hazards. So, save the spider for later, I decide to go into the Sandy Shocks. Now, I realized that Zapdos just generally does not really have any coverage that can touch a ground electric boy. So, Sandy Cheeks over here actually has a pretty solid matchup. And as I imagine, they probably switch here. I'm going to end up going ahead and trying to set up my Stealth Rock basically for free. It turns out they actually do stay in. And as I set up my rocks, we've now got the, the hazard stacking. And I'm not super worried about this matchup. So, it turns out they're actually going to go for the substitute, which is not really great for me. But also, it's kind of like it's mostly fine because then I can... You know, I know that I can take attacks. We've seen basically the coverage this thing is working with here. And I can kind of just break that and then see how they want to deal with his punk rock ass magneton. So I'm going to end up going for the Thunderbolt just because I know that I can just break the sub. I'm also faster and make sure this fella is not going to pull out any crazy Terra Ice, Terra Blast or any, any nonsense on us. So that takes care of the beanbag. And now they decide to go for the Hurricane. It does in fact miss again. So not Buddy's Day to hit Hurricanes. It wasn't going to do a whole chunk of damage, but potential for the Confusion. And just a little bit of chip probably would have been nice for him. But at this point, I, I'm thinking surely they're not going to stay in with his Zapdos. I can go for a Volt Switch, predicting a Switch, and then grab myself a matchup. And I do end up going for that Switch to conserve the Zapdos for later. So that Zapdos is a problem for my Galarian Zapdos in the back. Just obviously being a defensive wall with potential to like static and just be annoying. But as they now go into the Sneasler, here's what happens. They actually get caught up in the Sticky Web, which is great. But it does actually go ahead and activate their White Herb. So it brings their stats to normal, but also since it got rid of its item, it now has its Unburden ability uh, activated. And now this thing is way faster than literally anything I have. So that is a, quite a problem. Now, Sneasler, my team does not handle really well at all. I got Nothing takes an attack from this thing. But what I realize I can actually do is I can try to take advantage of Roberto's Focus Sash here. So I know that it's going to have Acrobatics, which I know I can live at least one of, which should allow me to at least Sucker Punch this fella twice. Now, I'm thinking at the health it's at, maybe a Sucker Punch is a two-hit KO. As I go for the first one, it looks like it's not quite going to be enough, which is unfortunate. So as they go for that Acrobatics, luckily we are able to live with that Sash. And at this point, it's like I might as well just go for another Sucker Punch, try to get as much damage as I can. Maybe Bad Boy pulls out a crit, and maybe not. It turns out, maybe not, because the sucker, it does not kill it. And what it does do, however, is at least gets it in range to where I can easily pick it off with something else. So, every dust does go down, but we did at least get up our Sticky Web, which is what we needed to do. And that's going to be really... It, honestly, the Sticky Web looks great in this match, as long as it stays up. So, I can now actually go into Toxic Rogue. Turns out Toxic Rogue has the same exact idea. All I can really do is go for a Sucker Punch here. I know that they're not going to end up switching the Sneasler out, because once you kind of use up your Unburden, it doesn't come back as you come back in, and it's kind of a one-time situation. And I just... How many Sucker Punches does it take to kill a Sneasler at half health? It turns out three of them. And that is how you slowly but surely ensure the Sneasler is not that annoying. So, with that thing out of the way, that's honestly like the biggest threat, or at least one of the main things that I'm always worried about from team previews. Now... This does allow them to switch back into the Zapdos. And notice it does not take the Stealth Rock chip, which means this fella, you can see his feet and they're definitely bare, but he is wearing heavy duty boots. And that's because, yeah, he didn't take any Stealth Rock and that kind of sucks because it wouldn't be nice to have. But obviously my safest play is just to bring right back in the Sandy Shocks here. Now, as they do finally connect on a Hurricane, it does do a, a, something, but again, I basically am a free wall against this fella. And I also have some leftovers. So we're just munching on an apple having a nice little magnet time over here and I decide to go for the Volt Switch thinking they're going to end up switching out again but they actually stay in this time and that doesn't do... it does a nice little chunk to it but now I just have to switch something in to whatever this thing wants to go for so I'm thinking, you know, hold on a second I'm going to go into my own Zapdos here just let me cook for a second so I bring in Roadrunner Zapdos they end up going for the Substitute which it barely has enough HP for and that is kind of bad and uh, at this point I'm like, okay, so... One good thing is, if I can take an attack from this, I will get weakness policy, and then after everything has touched sticky webs, Galarian Zapdos goes literally crazy. So, I go for the knockoff, I do outspeed, takes care of the substitute, which is great. And now they're actually able to fire off a discharge, which does kind of suck because it hurts a lot, but is exactly what we're looking for because it then activates the weakness policy. Now with our doubled attack and our thick thighs ready to run rampant on these hoes, 
we are looking real solid. So, the one bad news about going for a knockoff to pick this thing off is I run the risk of static, but we do not get static because we are brothers, and that is going to take care of the Zapdos. So now, that's exactly kind of what we needed here. I knock off the boots, by the way, take them shits off. But also, we look really nice against pretty much everything they have. So, as they now are able to bring in the Ogre Pond water form, they are going to get caught up in the webs, allows us to be faster, and while I do have the ability to knock it out with an obvious super effective stab Brave Bird, I also know that uh, with my nice little weakness policy boost, a stab close combat should also do the job, so I don't have, the run have to run the risk of taking that chip recoil, and that is amazing. So we go ahead and punch the mask right off her, that is going to just straight up knock out the Ogre Pond. And uh, while we do take some defensive drops, that is fine, because we are essentially in full form out here. Sometimes it happens via Defiant, sometimes it happens with a weakness policy, but all the time, Zapdos is just cool to use. So, now they decide to bring in Meowskarada, which, you know, is ordinarily a faster kitty, but, yeah, of course, Sticky Web doing its Sticky Web stuff is always something I try to prioritize when I notice they don't have a reliable hazard control. So, I do just outspeed, I kind of expected a potential terror there, but I just go ahead and punch it, and... That is going to take care of uh, the Meowskarada. These big old feats are doing some big close combating today. And Meowskarada being taken care of is amazing. I'm thinking surely they have a defensive Terra somewhere in the back. Um, but as they bring in the Rev of Room, which I hate this thing's name. I wish I wish it was Rev of Room. Rev of Room just feels weird to say. I don't know if I'm the only one. But he comes out with his tongue out and this thing just grosses me out. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to punch it. So... I know that I can outspeed, this thing is part steel, while it is poison type, it's going to be a neutral hit, but with that weakness policy boost, Zapdos just be killing stuff, and that's kind of the moral of the story out here, that takes care of the rev, and uh, no engine for you today, good sir. Now at this point it gets a little interesting, they do have one mon left, and it's going to end up being the, um, the freaking King Gambit. And this is a fella that obviously just is allergic as hell to these hands, but it com comes in, gets sticky webbed, it does not get defiant boost, which means it is going to be supreme overlord, which is why oftentimes people will save this for the last mon because it gets basically five boosts from that. But then I'm like, I, all, it's fine, I can just punch you, but at this, I, if it does have sucker punch, I actually die from that, especially, uh, you know, with those defensive boosts I have from going for so many close combats. But even what's worse is that they actually just go for the Terra Ghost here, which now makes it so that I, in fact, cannot punch you. And, uh, yeah, that it, it doesn't do anything. And now I'm thinking, oh, does it Swords Dance here? It doesn't really need the boost. It does just go for the Iron Head, and that's going to take care of Zapdos. So it straight up robs the guy of the, the full, you know, situational sweep. And I'll tell you what's mainly scary about this King Gambit is its ability to go for Sucker Punches here. And while it is at full health, it is Ghost-type. And so I'm thinking, hey, I'm actually... In a pretty good spot here to kind of uh, checkmate their Sucker Punch with my faster Sucker Punch. I can go into Toxic Croak here, and I can go ahead and bust out the, the Sucker Punch. I figure they're probably clicking it as well. I go first because I am faster. It doesn't quite have enough to kill, even with a critical hit. And I'm like, damn, Buddy just absolutely ate that up. I probably should have gone for my Dark Terra. But it turns out they actually go for the Iron Head. They were not even Sucker Punching, I guess, because of you know, being resisted and stuff. But, I mean, yeah, it would have been nice if they Sucker Punched there. Probably could have taken it regardless. Um, but what I did do is hopefully enough chip to the point where uh, Decidueye can maybe pick it off, or at least Magmortar could be faster. And moral of the story, sometimes this thing is scary with Sucker Punches, but if you just have faster stuff, or at least other priority, it's kind of one way around it. King Gambit is just annoying. So I go into Robin Hoot, and luckily with the chip that we've got on the guy, a Shadow Sneak with Stab plus Spell Tag should be enough to kill this thing, and that does take care of the King Gambit. So with that thing being gone, it is, it is very nice. So that's going to be the end of the match. Dead King Gambit and overall good time. So thank you guys very much for watching the video. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I will catch you guys next time. Also, if you have any recommendations for sets that I should use in future videos, go ahead and hit me with them in the comments because I like to read them.